My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today in the Diocese of Fall River, we're celebrating the dedication of the cathedral. There's a special mass in the Roman Missal for the feast day of a church, which is dedicated on a particular date, consecrated to God, and is a cause of celebration. I think I want to take a sort of philosophical approach to the importance of this occasion. One might wonder, well, what is the big deal about a building? And of course, the building is in and of itself important, but that's not immediately obvious. Uh, it's historically important. It's the place where the church becomes very visible. The church, of course, is a mystery that involves the invisible God and the invisible uh, and the visible church of Jesus Christ who took flesh and became man. So the fact that we celebrate uh, the erection of a temple to God in our local area is a reflection of a very important, I would say fundamental um, truth that sets our religion apart from other religions. There's only one true religion, and the true religion is incarnational. It's the religion of the God who came to dwell amongst us as one of us. Jesus Christ, true God and true man. And that fact is the reason why we celebrate a, a temple, a building, a physical thing, which is the house of God. In the gospel reading from St. John today, it concludes this way. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Here comes the philosophy. Truth, what is truth? A famous question that Pilate posed to Christ. And the philosophical answer is the truth is what is. That's realism. We know whatever we know through our senses, and our senses perceive things that exist. So spirit, we can't put our finger on. We can't access it through the senses. Spirit is invisible, intangible, makes no sound, has no smell. And yet it's powerfully perceived in our soul, which is also spirit. But we must worship also in truth. And that's the real, the concrete. St. James said, show me your faith without works. What's that? And I'll show you my faith with works. Well, that's something we can see. That's something we can put our finger on. The works of charity, which are the necessary manifestation of the faith of Jesus Christ, who is God, who is love. So that's the reason we celebrate the erection of a cathedral, which for our local church, is the center. The cathedral means, cathedra means chair. And so cathedral is where the bishop, the head of this uh, portion of the church in Fall River, where he has his chair, where he sits and presides over the liturgy. And there are some facts regarding the Cathedral of Fall River, and I thought they were in my breviary, and they're not, so I have to go off of memory. Uh, the Cathedral of Fall River took about 50 years to construct. It was begun around 1850. I think the exact year was 1851 and, or 1852, and it was dedicated as the cathedral 
actually not, it was ded dedicated as a parish church initially uh, in 1901. And in 1904, Pope Pius X then made, created the Diocese of Fall River, and that church became the cathedral at that point, so it was dedicated as the cathedral in 1904. Uh, I can tell you that it's built of granite and uh, by an architect, I think his name was Keeley of Brooklyn. Uh, it's, it contains beautiful stained glass windows uh, from various origins. I know that the original ones are from Germany. Uh, they were installed early on. And then there were some more recently installed in 1952, which were, I think, uh, made here locally or in, in Boston, if I'm not mistaken. All that information is there on the diocesan website. And those things are important. As I said, you know, our faith, our religion is incarnational. And so it has to do with the things that manifest our faith and the love and dedication that went into the building of that church. I mean, think about it, 50 years is a long time. Uh, the Gothic cathedrals in Europe, which give testimony to the, the great love that the people had for God and spent a lifetime and more than a lifetime to construct these uh, structures that reach up to the sky to pro proclaim God, that's, that's powerful. People respond to that. They may not think it all through, but it's evident. And the church then, this physical place, this reality, this place where we can access God, not only in spirit, but in truth, derives its holiness from the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. The first reading I'm not sure which one of these was the first reading but we spoke we heard that uh, of the temple of God the heavenly Jerusalem where God will dwell among men that, that heavenly Jerusalem is not yet fully realized, but it has begun here. God is with us, among us. He is really and truly present in the Blessed Sacrament. And that's why the specific location is important. I think it was St. John who said, uh, where the body is, there also the eagles will gather. How will you know where he is? Well, you'll see the eagles or the eagles will be there. One interpretation of that is, could be that the body of Christ is with us, not a dead body, a living body, a glorious body sacramentally present in the Eucharist. And the eagles, the majestic birds that rule the skies, well, that could be symbolic of the angels. And though we don't see the angels, they also have a presence and they're also here. Wherever Christ is, they gather and their presence and the presence of our Lord Jesus sanctify a place. Just like a place can be infested with demonic presence, a place can be sanctified and is sanctified by the presence of Christ and the church, he's among us. So this is clearly a reason to celebrate. We set aside one day of the year to celebrate the dedication of the church and the whole uh, Diocese of Fall River celebrates today that truth, which is the manifestation of God among us and uh, the church that he created, which has a uh, structure and a hierarchy and is presided over by our bishop, presently Bishop Edgar de Cunha of this diocese, who is connected to the head of the, the visible head, the vicar of Christ on earth, the Pope, the Bishop of Rome. So 
In justice, we praise the glorious name of God, as we said in the psalm, the mighty God who manifests himself among us, makes his love real and enables us to worship him in spirit and truth and to be then uh, instruments of his love and his visible presence here on earth for those who aren't yet connected to him through the true religion. We pray for protection of our bishop and all the bishops. We pray for the protection of the church, both in the invisible spirit of faith and in the visible reality of its structures on earth, especially now where attacks are increasing on churches, that men may have the wisdom not to attack God, but rather to come humbly to him and be in his presence and be sanctified. The Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, help us to maintain the faith in truth and in spirit. Praise be Jesus and Mary.